Clay just released the Water Blast update to the public. There are three main new things that you can keep your eyes on. Meteors, timed blueprint drops and fossils. Let's start with the blueprints that can either be found in the main menu, under the supply closet or when this tiny symbol here on the top left shines blue. Then you can click on it and you will get a new blueprint. Clay plans to introduce weekly blueprint drops that unlock at randomized time intervals during the gameplay. They wrote that you should get everything within 6 hours of gameplay. But these numbers can be changed at any time. You can check the drop counter on the Clay reward page. I am talking about this one here. Click on oxygen not included and claim your rewards. The new story traits can be activated under the story trait tab. Here you can see the ancient specimen. They added fossils as ancient specimen story trait. Once the main fossil site has been found and undug, the dupes can start excavating it. After excavation you can click on the building again and it shows you that you finished the ancient specimen part 1 of 4. If you click on the other fossils, it will show you where they are. There are 3 other fossils in total. The ember fossil, the frozen fossil and the petrified fossil. After excavating each individual one of these, they will drop 4 tons of normal fossil, which you can use for steel production. These tinier fossil fragments will drop 1.5 tons of fossil, or in some cases even 2 tons of fossil. These here to the left are the 2 ton fossil variants, these to the right are the 1.5 ton fossil variants, and this here also 2 tons. Once you excavated all 4 fossil parts, you can activate the fossil quarry. Now looking like this. It will also drop the critter collar, which you can collect and place on a pedestal. After that you can use the fossil quarry. You can use the 1 kilogram of diamond in the fossil quarry to get 100 kilogram of fossil in the process. In order for you to be able to excavate anything, you will need a master artworker dupe, which is this skill right here. If you don't want to keep your fossils, you can use a dupe that is able to demolish stuff to get rid of them. You will need the demolition skill for this. And now the largest part of the update, the meteor showers. There's now the option for the base game and the DLC to set how often they should appear from clear skies with no meteors all the way up to doomsday. They added the new rock fan trade, which gives a plus three bonus to all attributes during the meteor showers. Meteor showers look like this on the star map if they are far away and haven't been identified by a telescope yet. They look like this when identified, like this when they reach their designation and finally like this when crashing onto the planet. Meteor showers can now be seen on the star map, traveling to the destination asteroid and can be identified with a telescope. As soon as they are in reach of a telescope, it now tells you it is a ice meteor shower with a time before collision of 8 cycles. It also tells you how it is constructed, snow meteor 93% and ice meteors 7%. The more planets you have, the more meteor showers will be on their way. We still have the ice meteor shower here, we do have the gassy meteor shower and we do have the regolith meteor shower which for some reason does not have an artwork at the moment. The more planets we conquer, the more meteors can be on their way. I'm not sure if there's a limit, but at the moment I can only see three. When the meteor shower then finally reaches the planet, this is how it looks. The snow meteors leave snow behind, of course, and I covered the rest in the previous update videos. If you do not want the meteors to ruin your nice base, there's now the new blast shot building, which is able to shoot down meteorites. As long as they are not entombed, the blast shot buildings can automatically be supplied by conveyor rails. As the name suggests, the building uses up blast shots. After a blast shot was fired, the building throws out 2.5 kg of the material that the blast shot was made of. In order to construct blast shots, you will need a special skill, which is the pyrotechnics skill on the far right of the tidying tree. With this skill and aluminum, cobalt, copper or iron, you can build a blast shot. They are produced in a batch of 5 and need 25 refined metal and 50 kg petroleum. The petroleum can be fed via a pipe. They need 960 watts of power. <laughs> and the new animation is absolutely amazing, I love it. Specifically for the DLC, they added a variety of meteor showers to different asteroids. The meteor showers are less intense and less frequent than those of the base game. Starting with the classic style start asteroid, which is this one and all the followings here, they can have ice, copper or oxalite meteor showers. 
The classic style nearby asteroid, which is this year, the nearby asteroids, can have gold and iron meteor showers. As for the spaced out style asteroids, the spaced out style nearby world, the one without a teleporter, which probably is this one, has oxalite meteor showers. The spaced out style nearby world with the teleporter has copper, ice and slimy meteor showers. The regolith asteroid, which is a smaller distant asteroid on the DLC planet, here, this one, has regolith meteor showers that already existed before the update, ice meteor showers and iron meteor showers. Even if you choose a different asteroid in the DLC, they all still have regolith asteroids in the far vicinity. The radioactive ocean asteroid, when chosen as the main asteroid or as a nearby asteroid or a distant asteroid, has uranium meteor showers. The metallic swampy asteroid, this one here, or maybe you can choose it here, has slimy and gold meteor showers. The Desolands, which is the tiny version of the Badlands asteroid, does have ice meteor showers. And a frozen asteroid, this one, or here, if it is a nearby asteroid, does have oxalite meteor showers. But you can also see that on the star map. Selecting an asteroid on the star map now lists potential types of meteor showers for that asteroid. So if we select the regolith asteroid for example and scroll down, it lists ice meteor showers, iron meteor showers and regolith meteor showers. For this one, there are no meteor showers expected for the water planet, nothing expected, and so on and so forth. So now you can see what to expect yourself. They changed the Trailblazer module and Rover Lander to be able to land on a one tile. They revisited the Fullerene meteor shower artwork. Thank you a lot for watching guys and if you want to see how this update came to be, here are three more videos about this update before it even released. Also, if you want to see what else has been fixed and update notes, just check out the original clay site. I linked it in the description. There you can find the update notes.